Hello and welcome to Social Media Ministries. My name is Spencer Kaufman. Thank you for being here today. Hopefully you are a returning visitor and you watched the sermon last week about understanding communion, the body or the bread. And this week we are continuing that message with understanding communion, the wine or the juice that you drink representing the blood of Christ. So if you haven't seen that message, please check it out. It'll be in a card right here if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, you can search for it. it should be scroll, you know, the other way in your podcast feed. It'll be there or simply search for it on our website, our blog, uh, social media pages, wherever. I hope you're following us on all of them. Subscribe to us, like our videos, share our content, help us reach more people with the gospel of Christ. All right, like I said, today we are continuing on. So understanding communion, last week we talked about how the bread is not really bread that you're eating. You're eating this bread here, just like how people ate the bread of heaven in the Old Testament, they ate manna. Really what it means is you need to be feasting on Jesus. He is the bread of life. He came down from heaven and he allowed us to have his flesh eat the body of Christ spiritually and be fed forever and live forever. We can have life everlasting through our belief in Jesus Christ. So if you don't believe in Jesus, if he is not your Lord and Savior, then make that decision today to become a follower of Jesus. Say, dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want to live for you. Thank you for dying for me. That's it. It's very simple. You can find longer prayers if you want. You can ask questions. You can comment below. You can contact us. Whatever you want to do, but make that choice. Follow Jesus. This cup, this cup of communion, this drink, this wine, this juice, whatever it is, represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed for you, by the way. Jesus died for you. He gave his life for you so you could live by your choice. Now, Luke 22.20, in the same way after the supper, so after they had supper, uh, when Jesus broke the bread, we talked about that last week. Now, of course, they probably didn't only eat bread. Maybe they had some meats and some cheeses and olives and dates and figs and a nice little sit-down meal. It was the last supper. Uh, in the, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, we've talked about this before, in my blood which is poured out for you. And he wants them to drink it or to do it in remembrance of him. Now that's important. It's the new covenant. So what is this new covenant? This, this cup represents the new covenant of Jesus' blood poured out for you. He died for you. His blood was spilled. It was shed. Now, the old covenant uh, has a couple other things. So in the past, in the Old Testament, if you sinned, you said a swear word, you uh, cursed someone, you stole something, you lied, you cheated, sexual sin, whatever it was, you sinned, you had to make a sacrifice to atone for those sins. Now, depending on the sin, the sacrifice could have been different depending on your social, social economic status, the sacrifice could have been different, but... Basically, it was taking a lamb without the effect, so a perfect lamb, killing it, pouring out its blood on the altar, and sprinkling it. All this, the Levites would go through these routines. And that blood was spilled so that you didn't have to die for committing that sin. Now, the new covenant is Jesus died for you. He was perfect. He is perfect. We are sinners. We are imperfect. So we could not be our own sacrifice. We are imperfect. How could we be a sacrifice for ourselves? That would be like a blemished lamb being a sacrifice. It won't work. It's not acceptable. God wouldn't accept it. Now God knew that we weren't always going to be doing this. He's like, boy, these people have a hard enough time making these sacrifices. Imagine as time goes on, in today's day and age, someone living in the middle of New York, where are they going to find a lamb? Well, they might be able to find a pigeon pour out the blood, but then animal rights activists come after them. You say, no, I'm just sacrificing for my sin. Lock them up. Hate crimes against animals. You see how it would be a disaster. 
God knew this. He said, I got to send Jesus. You got to die. You got to die for them. Jesus said, I'll go. I'll do it. Died for them so we don't have to do any of that anymore. Jesus paid for our sins. His blood was spilled for you. Now, the new covenant says, if you believe that Jesus died for you and you accept him as your savior, you invite him into your heart, then you will go to heaven. Your sins can be forgiven. John 3.16, you probably know the verse, for God so loved the world. God so loved us, the people in the world. He sent his son to die, his only son to die, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, before his death, the wine represented the old covenant. Now, there was what's called the old covenant and maybe the old, old covenant or the older covenant. What I told you about with sacrificing the lambs and, and, and maybe birds for your sins is like the older covenant or the old covenant. But even before then, that was even before then, or, or during, or, or whatever you choose, because it, it happened before, you had to sacrifice for your sins. When Adam and Eve died, God killed a perfect lamb. And then as time went on, there was this other time period during Egyptian captivity when the Hebrews were enslaved. And that's where this covenant comes from. And then after that, God had even more rules and they still sacrificed. And then, you know, continued. Then Jesus. So around there, we have kind of two covenants that the blood represents. And the one is that a sacrifice must be made. But there is a more significant covenant that was of Passover. And this is what Jesus and his disciples were celebrating that night at the Last Supper. They were having the Passover meal. And this is when the Israelites were in Egypt, they sacrificed a perfect firstborn lamb. Okay, so that's bringing in part of that older covenant when, when the lamb had to be sacrificed. And it was also carried through into new Levitical tradition. And then when Jesus came, he said, you don't have to do that anymore. I died for you. Or when he came and died, he did it for us. And so after Jesus' death, we no longer have to do that. But the night of Passover, not the night that Jesus had the Last Supper, but the first Passover, the very first time, the Israelites sacrificed a perfect lamb and they put the blood on the doorposts of their houses. And then the angel of death came through and any house that had the blood on the doorpost, it would pass over that house. Now, what would happen if you didn't have the blood? Well, that angel of death came into the house and killed the firstborn son in that house as a sacrifice for the sins, or just as a sacrifice. And so there is significance all the way through this. Jesus is God's only son, so of course he is the firstborn. Now, how was he born? Through the Virgin Mary, the Holy Spirit. So the firstborn, he was Mary's firstborn earthly son. And so he was the firstborn. He was perfect without defect. So the lamb that was slaughtered was the firstborn lamb, a male perfect without defect. Jesus was a male perfect without defect. He died for the sins of the world. The Passover lamb was slaughtered and put on the doorpost so that it died in place of the firstborn imperfect male in that household. Exodus 12, 5 through 7. Let's read that. Exodus 12, chapter, uh, ver chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. No, sorry. Yeah, 12, 5, and 7. Let's check that out. This is the blood on the doorposts. So, the animals you choose must be year-old males without defect. You may take them from the sheep or the goats. So they had to be year-old males without defect, meaning they were innocent, perfect. Now, verses 12 and 13, On the same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. So that means all the animals firstborn would die. How would you know? Well, if you weren't there when they were birthed, you wouldn't know. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord, Yahweh. 
The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And I, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. That's where we get Passover. The Passover because God passed over them. So if you had the blood on your doorpost, I'm a firstborn, so if my family did it, I would be saved. And then if we had animals, they would also be saved. But if you didn't have the blood, I'd be a goner, and the firstborn animals in our household would have been a goner as well. This is very significant. The Passover meal was an act of remembrance of the Passover. They celebrated this meal, they had a Passover feast, they continued on as an act of remembrance of what God did for the Israelites way back then. That's why Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. So now when we celebrate communion today, we are, even in churches, they say, this is the cup of the new covenant. Well, what is that? We are celebrating in remembering Jesus, that he died. Whereas prior to this, we were celebrating and remembering that the lamb died and God passed over and spared us. Not we, because we weren't alive back then. We'd be pretty old. But that's what it represented. And so this blood is the new covenant. This is the cup of the new covenant. We are remembering what Jesus did for the entire world, not just what God did for the nation of Israel. Why? Well, because Jesus died for everyone. First the Jew, then the Gentile. The Jews didn't want him. They say, ah, no, no, we don't believe you're the Messiah. He's fine, we'll go to the Gentiles. Just like the parable of the wedding feast. He said, hey, my guests haven't come. Well, fine, I'm going to fill this place so there's no room for them. Go out to the markets. Invite all the homeless, all the poor. Bring them in here. He says, yeah, sir, there's still room. Go get more. I don't want any of the guests I invited to have place in here because they rejected me. In the same way, those that rejected God he said, first the Jew, okay, the Jews didn't want him. Now we go to the Gentiles so people like you and me can be saved. How cool is that? God died for everyone. The Passover lamb, the, the first covenant, the Passover, wasn't celebrated by you and me or people of you and me. We didn't celebrate it. I come from Norwegian heritage, so if the Vikings were alive, um, when Jesus was alive, they had their own pillaging uh, fjords in Norway and Jesus was over in the Middle East, we wouldn't have been celebrating the Passover meal and these people in, over here, they, they probably wouldn't have experienced the death of a firstborn. They did. So carried on through Jewish tradition, they celebrated Passover as an act of remembrance of what God did for them that night. Today, we can all celebrate communion as an act of remembrance for what Jesus did for us when he died. God delivered the Israelites from the death angel as long as they had faith and placed it in the blood of the lamb that God told them to sacrifice or goat. In the same way, communion is an act of remembrance that Jesus delivered us from our sins as long as we place our faith in his blood. We choose to believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb of God. And we put our faith in his blood. We say, hey, I'm not good enough. I can never get to heaven. I will never get there. I can do a million sermons. Every time I do a sermon, a million people, every time, Lord willing, would become a Christian. I could do a million good deeds I could try my hardest not to sin. I could sin never. I'll never sin. And then I sin once. I'm going to hell. That one sin condemns me to hell. But if I put my faith in Jesus, put my faith in his blood, I say, his blood is what set me free of my sin. Your blood, Jesus, covered my sin. 
just like that lamb washed away the sins when it was a sacrifice, Jesus was my sacrifice. So when I die and God looks at me on the day of judgment and says, Spencer, why would I ever let you in? Look at what you did. You've lied. You've cheated. You've stolen. You've done this. You've done this. You've done this. All these things. Why should you come into heaven? How should I let you in? And I say, I can't. I cannot get into heaven. But because Jesus died for me, I'm able to come in. His blood paid for all of that. He paid for that. And God says, all right, come in. Your sins, you've been forgiven, you're wiped clean. That's the right answer. But you have to have believed that all your life and accepted Jesus as your Savior. John chapter 6, verses 53 to 57. I'm going to read them, so if you have your Bibles, open it up with me. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, which we talked about last week, and drink his blood. Wait a minute. Whoa, drink his blood. Act of remembrance in communion. You're drinking the wine. Okay? You have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Let's pause there. You must, remember, eat the flesh, eat the body of Christ, which is diving into the word, fellowshipping with others, going to church, watching sermons, etc. That's the body of Christ. Feed your spirit. In the same way, you need to give our spirit something to drink. Our spirit hungers and thirsts for righteousness. If you take care of the hunger, now you have eternal life. Your spirit will never be hungry because you're continuing to feed it. It will never be hungry. Now your spirit is thirsty. What do you give it? The blood of Jesus. Through faith. Say, my faith is in the blood of Jesus. He died for me. He wiped away my sins. My spirit's thirst is quenched. Its thirst was murdered. Jesus died so that we do not have to be thirsty anymore. His blood quenches our thirst. The thirst will kill us. We are so thirsty for something. Our spirit is so thirsty that we will die. We will, we will die of our sin. But if we quench that thirst through Jesus' blood, we can live forever. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So Jesus is alive because of the Father. We are alive because of Jesus. If we follow Jesus exactly as Jesus is of God, then Jesus is in us exactly as Jesus is in God. It's like Paul said, Hey, you guys have a hard time following what Jesus said, so follow me. Do as I do as I follow Jesus. Just like this right now. I'm explaining to you what this is. You're following what I say as I've received it from Jesus. As I've received it through the Holy Spirit. You can also receive it. You have the Holy Spirit. Your, your spirit is thirsty. Quench it with the blood of Jesus. Accept that Jesus died for you. And have faith in his blood that he paid for you. The one who feeds on me will live because of me. Feed on Jesus. This bread that came down from heaven, your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Now, you know you can eat the bread, the body of Christ. That satisfies your spiritual hunger. Satisfy your spiritual thirst by accepting Jesus' blood. The blood of Jesus paid for you. Accept that. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Live forever. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for dying for us, for coming here, for shedding your blood to quench our thirst. Lord Jesus, I ask that those watching and listening would share you with others so that their thirst could be quenched and satisfied 
that they would uh, quench their thirst with your blood and believe that your blood paid for them, that you were the sacrifice for their sins, that they would accept you and follow you and live for you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't made the decision to follow Christ, please comment below, reach out to us. We would love to help you do that. In addition, you can talk to someone. Talk to someone at your church. Talk to the Bible thumper who's been talking to you about Jesus. Talk to the Jesus freaks that you know. Become weird. Be like them. Follow Jesus and change your life. If you have any questions about this, about communion, wine, bread, feel free to comment below. It's a great sermon. It's a great message. It's something that is excellent for us to understand exactly what it is. We can truly live forever. We can eat the bread and drink the wine, never be hungry and never be thirsty. God bless.